This is concurrent digital input and digital output on the National Instruments USB 6211. We'll go into LabVIEW in just a moment to show you how to program this, but first let me describe our hardware setup. This is the USB 6211. Here's our digital input ports and our digital output ports are right over here. We have a switch that comes in to our digital input line zero and it completes a circuit to ground. So when we push it, we'll get a logic low state. When the switch is not pushed, we have a pull-up resistor that will hold it at a logic high state. What we have here on the digital output side is driving an LED. It has a resistor in it to limit current, and it comes back to the digital ground of the system. So that's our hardware setup. Let's go into LabVIEW and program our application. First thing that we'll do is put an LED on the front panel. We'll stretch it out so that you can see it, and we'll change its color to match the color of the LED that we have which in our case is a yellow color. So we'll set the high color to be bright and the off color to be a darker value of yellow. We'll say OK there and we're going to place this inside an array. And the reason we're going to do this is our ports actually have multiple lines. So we could have a, an array or a table of LEDs in this case or inputs. So we'll take that and we'll drop it into our, our array. And now if we stretch that out you can see that we can have multiple of these. So that's our front panel. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our diagram and program this. First thing that we're going to do is get a DAC assistant. So we'll click the right mouse button. We'll go get a DAC assistant and we'll drop it down. And this is going to set our digital input values. We'll acquire signals, digital input, line input, and then we'll choose line zero. In this case, it will be set up and ready to go, but we can actually test it out. So if we click the Run button, and if I reach in and I push the switch now, you can see that it actuates, and we know that the function is running and ready to go. So let's stop that, click OK, and we're all set up. Now we'll actually wire that digital input over to our array of LEDs so that when we run this, we'll see those LEDs change when I push the button. So the next thing that we would like to do is do a digital output because we want to actually drive the LED to match the state of the switch. So we'll put this down, it'll open up and we'll say generate signals this time, we'll say digital output line 0 and we'll choose line 0 here. Again we can go and test this out so if we run this at the top and we click on this you can actually see that the LED state will change and now it comes on. So this confirms that our digital output's working and we're set and ready to go there. So we'll click OK and confirm that function and then we're going to do a, a straight feed through of our digital input information straight out to our LED. And this creates a feed through when I push the button the light should come on. We'll put this inside of a loop so that it runs over and over again and I know that it doesn't have to run all of that fast, so we're going to add a timer in here that says update this every 100 milliseconds or 10 times every second. And then finally what we'll do is we'll put a true false so that we can shut this loop off on the front panel when we're done. So this is a controller or a boolean. So at this point we're ready to go and run our program. So let's go to the front panel Let's click the Run button, and when I reach in and I push the switch, you'll see that our LED on the front panel reacts the way that it should, and we're actually driving a digital output concurrently to our digital lines. Let's go back to our diagram now and add one other thing in. Because this is LabVIEW and it can remember all of your digital states if you want it to, we're going to take that output data, or the, the digital input data in this case, we're going to wire it over to our loop border. And we're going to tell it to enable indexing. And what this means is it's going to keep a record of all the digital input states that it read. We're going to go and copy this digital output task that we have and just drop it over here. And this creates an exact copy. We're going to put that inside of a loop as well, but not the same kind of loop. This is going to be a for loop. So we'll put it in here, and what this is going to do is allow us to replay that digital pattern. So we'll wire that digital pattern right in. And the for loop knows how many times to run because it will know how many digital states were in our stored set, and then it will replay those. And then finally, I want to take the same timing and put it inside the for loop so that it replays it with the same timing. Now this is software driven. I would tell you so if you wanted to do high-speed digital waveform we would recommend some of our other M-series products to do that. But let's go ahead and run this so we'll hit the run button then I'll reach in and what we'll do here is I'll actuate this with some slow pulses then I'll do some fast ones 
and then a few more slow ones. Now we'll reach in and hit the stop button, and now it's going to go into our for loop, and what you're going to see is this LED here blinking with exactly the same pattern that I had actuated at as well. So we've done concurrent digital input and digital output, as well as recording these values and playing them back. And this is how you do this application on the National Instruments USB 6211.